And we're back. Hey friends, welcome to another video in this series on how I plan my hikes. Last time we actually planned our route, so a three day loop using the Palmetto and Foothills trails to kind of connect into a little less than a 25 mile uh, backpacking trip. And this time we are gonna be taking a look at weather. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of my favorite websites to check to get as accurate as I can an idea of what to expect. So we're gonna take a look at mountainforecast.com. What I really like about this site is it can give you a forecast for not just a general town or area, but a forecast for that specific peak or peaks in the area. So we're gonna take a look at Sassafras Mountain and what the forecast over the next couple days will be there. Another thing on mountain forecast is you can look at peak versus base weather. So that's a feature I really like. Now we're also going to be hiking pretty close to Pinnacle Mountain. So I'm gonna check the forecast for there as well. One downside of this site is it doesn't have weather data for every peak. So you have to use ones that are close to get kind of an idea. Now, another site I like to use is just the weather.gov, their forecast, and look at the expected weather for towns close to the area I'm gonna be hiking. So for this one, we're gonna look at the weather for Sunset, South Carolina, and for Pickens. Sunset is the kind of region or town you would find Sassafras Mountain, and then Pickens is kind of that area that Table Rock's address is associated with. So we're gonna look at the weather for those areas as well. And it's looking like overall still summer temperatures in the 80s and 70s, and a possibility of it getting down into the 60s at those higher peaks at nighttime. And we're probably gonna get rained on on this trip. It's showing thunderstorm risks and uh, light rain on some of the days of our trip. So when we talk about packing in the next video, you can bet there's gonna be a rain jacket involved. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is logistics. We've decided that we're gonna do a loop hike. Now with two people, you can kind of coordinate a shuttle hike where you park one car at one end and one at the other, but we're gonna just go ahead and do a loop only using one car and end up where we started. And I prefer loop hikes personally. I do a lot of solo backpacking, so obviously I can't be in two places at once and you know, park two cars. So a loop hike is definitely my preference. It takes just an extra headache out of the planning and logistics. Since we're going to be parking at a trailhead inside the state park, it's gonna be important that we get a overnight parking permit and it's $6 a night at Table Rock State Park. So we're definitely gonna to have to check into the ranger station and give them our information and pay for our overnight parking and all of that before we actually hit the trail. Another logistics detail to consider is the place we're ending up isn't the exact place we parked. So we are going to come out at a different trailhead, but it's not that far away from where we started. It's less than a mile walk um, through the state park to that other trailhead. So of course, we're gonna be exercising plenty of caution and staying off of the actual road as we make our way back up to the trailhead we started at. Another detail I want to mention having to do with logistics that isn't really relevant to this trip has to do with traveling. So if you're someone who has to travel a pretty decent distance to get to the area you're backpacking in, chances are after being in the car all day, you're not gonna have the mental or even physical energy to hit the trail and then tackle big miles. Um, by the time you reach the trailhead, half or even three quarters of the day may be gone. So something I like to do is look for campgrounds or even lodging options in the area. And a good example is the Art Lobe through hike I did. I knew after driving all day to Pisgah National Forest 
then another hour long shuttle drive, I was not going to be ready to, you know, tackle the miles and the terrain that the art lobe had to offer. So I decided to rent a campsite at Davidson River Campground. I'd get all my traveling out of the way, get a good night's sleep, and then tackle the trail first thing the next morning. And then I was able to get 15, 16 miles in that first day. Hopefully someone finds that helpful. And depending on where you're backpacking, it may not be plausible to get just a couple miles in. There may not be campsites very close to the trailhead. So you may need to look into those campground or lodging options so that you can cover the mileage necessary and have the hours in the day to get to your first campsite. Um, yeah, so hopefully, like I said, that's helpful to somebody, um, but not really relevant to this particular trip. I know this was a little bit shorter of a video compared to the last ones, but I just wanted to focus on weather and logistics this time. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I can't wait to see you again next time when we talk about packing for our trip. Tracing my footsteps through the wind Back to a place where I could